Welcome into the sports zone. You're looking at a live look from inside Barb Krill Gymnasium where tonight the Marquette boys basketball team is hosting the Nagani Miners. This is one of the biggest rivalries we have here in the UP. Each year these two teams battle it out for the Victor's Cup. Marquette has been getting the better of the Miners as of late, but don't count out Nagani. Dan Waterman always has his team up to play against their biggest rival. These teams met back in early January. Marquette topped Nagani 55-253 in a back and forth contest. The Miners played well without Gerald Johnson, arguably their best player, but Jonas Bichik played big, scoring 23 points as the Redmen hung on for the victory. We'll check back in on this game later in the show. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back into the Sports Zone. I'm your host, Jake Durant, and as always, I'm joined by Haley Schoengart. Now, Haley, I'm so happy to be back after missing last week. Yes, it was a little weird, I must say, doing Sports Zone without you, Jake, so I am happy you are back and feeling better. And we've got to catch you up on our game of the week. We had a rematch of two of the best girls basketball teams in girls' hoops on Monday. Houghton welcomed in Calumet for a battle of the Copper Country Supremacy. The Copper Kings got the best of Houghton in their first matchup. The Gremlins looking to get even on their home court. Early in the first, Gremlins up a bucket. Jana Locus left wide open at the top of the key. She has time to set her feet and drains a high arching three ball. Calumet leads 3-2. Later off the inbound, Stella Wickstrom flashes to the rim. She keeps that ball up and above her head. That quickly gets the shot in 9-4. Copper Kings, Houghton doing a nice job handling the pressure here. A couple quick passes leads to a lay in four. Win Markham, 9-6 Calumet. Second quarter with the game tied at 24, Megan Truella has a clear lane to the basket. She takes it all the way in with little resistance for the lane. Gremlins take the lead. Third quarter, Alexis Strom driving her shot is too strong, but Laura Giacchino is there for the offensive put rebound. The putback, and she gets the foul. She made the free throw to make it 28-27. Houghton still in the third. This one staying close. There was Markham again with the reverse lane for the score. Then it's Truella realizing no one is stopping her. She does the right thing, takes it to the rim for another bucket. Houghton takes this one 58 to 49. Annika Peterson led Houghton with 20. Mary Beth Hallinan dropped 12 for Calumet. Gremlins head coach Julie Flippis said the big key to this game was handling that Calumet pressure. We've worked on it for two years and um, we've always tried to get our kids to slow the pace down and the style of that pressure is to have a real high tempo and tonight Paige Sleeman and Megan Troella did a heck of a job for us and um, I think that was a key to the game. Uh, we had a game plan and, and our kids executed and they didn't waver from it. Hit shots, got stops, took care of the ball. Haley, we had a big game between top five opponents happen on Wednesday night in boys hoops. The second ranked Escanaba Eskimos welcomed in the fifth ranked Jeffers Jets. And we'd heard Johnny Schutz say it after that ETC game and Jeffers rematch a few weeks ago. Jeffers shut down ETC on their home court and they had their eyes on the Eskimos next. Let's go to Escanaba for the game between the number five Jets and the number two Eskimos. We'll pick it up in the second quarter. Mose with the 11 point lead. Isaiah Fromm with the pump fake takes one dribble, pulls up and knocks it down. Jets trailing by nine. Eski comes back the other way. Nice dish from Casey Bray to Trevor Brown who lays it in. Eski up 33-22. The Eskimos taking advantage of their height down low. Colin Hudson catches deep near the rim, turns and scores. Escanaba up 35-22. Jets trying to get back into it. Levi Fromm spots up. That's a good looking three ball. Escanaba then pushing the pace. Connor Smail outraces everyone for the bucket. 46-28 Escanaba. Then it's Johnny Schutz. He can score in a variety of ways. That's a tough fadeaway shot off of one foot. He still gets it to go. Jets still trailing by double digits. Jeffers would cut that lead to five with just four minutes left in the game, but that's as close as they would get. Smail and the rest of the Eskimos go on to win this one 69-56. to Make sure to stay with us. We will reveal our updated team rankings. And when we return, we're going to take a look back at our top plays of last week. It's our top three on three coming up after the break. Welcome back into the Sports Zone. It's time to go over our updated team rankings. We had a few upsets in both boys and girls basketball last week. Let's see if that shakes some things up. We will kick off with boys divisions one through three. Despite their loss to the Eskimos last week, the Menominee Maroons will remain in that top spot. Eski will come in at number two. The Flivers will fall to number three. The Jeffers Jets will come in at number four. And rounding out the top five, we have the Westwood Patriots. The Marquette Redmen will get an honorable mention. And on over in Division 4, Rudyard continues to, to stay perfect and are atop of our rankings at a 15-0 and 0 record. At number 2, we have the North Central Jets. Munising will move up into that third spot. 
Ewan Trout Creek comes in at number four, and Norway will wrap up our rankings at number five. Wakefield Marinisco gets an honorable mention this week. And now let's get some girl power up in here. We will kick off with the girls divisions one through three. Calumet in the top spot this week. The Houghton Gremlins will come in at two. St. Ignis stays put in that third spot. Sue St. Marie coming in at four. And Nagani will round out the top five for the ladies. The Hancock Bulldogs will get an honorable mention this week. And on over in Division 4 for the ladies, the Berga Vikings on top for another week at 13 and 1. The Carney Nato Wolves secure that number 2 spot. Ewan Trout Creek stays put at number 3. Pickford will come in at that number 4 spot, and Ontonagan will come into our rankings at number 5. Munising and Rudyard will get honorable mentions. It's time to reveal our top three plays that we've witnessed since our last show. Now these plays were so good they just might go more viral than Nick Baumgartner winning that gold medal. Here is our top three on three plays of the week. Number three. For our number three play of the week, we go to Nagani. Ty Jacobson blows by his defender. He doesn't hesitate, exploding to the rim, and he absorbs contact and finishes with the and one bucket. Jacobson showing quickness, speed, and his leaping abilities there. The Miners would go on to win this game over Gladstone, and it was plays like that that was the reason why. Congrats, Ty. You get our number three play of the week. Number two. For our number two play of the week, we head to Houghton. The Gremlins got payback, topping the Calumet Copper Kings on their home court Monday night. Gwen Markham with a sweet reverse lay-in. That takes some top-tier athleticism and concentration. Markham was just one of many Gremlins who really stepped up in this one. Some really good basketball being played up in the Copper Country. Congratulations, Gwen. You get our number two play of the week. Number one. And for our number one play of the week, we head back to Escanaba. Johnny Schutz and the Jets didn't end the game with a victory, but Schutz showing off some insane skill here, posting his defender up, shooting that tough fadeaway off of one foot. Now, every time I see a shot like that, I automatically think of Dirk Nowitzki, the Dallas Mavericks legend. Schutz is a pure scorer, and he can get it done in a variety of ways. There was no way we could not revisit this one. Congrats, Johnny. You get our number one play of the week. Coming up next on the Sports Zone, we're going to take a look back at which players were in the zone and stuff the stat sheet. And we will introduce you to a huge piece within the Nagani and Ishpeming athletic programs. That's coming up next. Welcome back into the Sports Zone. It's now time to take a look back at some big time performances from last week and the first part of this week. These players were definitely in the zone. We'll start with the ladies. North Dickinson Ashton Horde led the Nordics with 19 points in a win over Munising on Thursday night. Callie Chenoweth led Hancock with 17 points as the Bulldogs topped Houghton in their annual Wing Dean game last Thursday night. Natalie Prophet scored 19 points to help Westwood defeat Manistique on Friday. Gladstone's Claire Van Jenhoven led the Braves with 28 points in an upset win over Escanaba Monday night. Houghton Jr. Annika Peterson led the Gremlins with 20 points as Houghton and handed Calumet their second loss of the season on Tuesday night. Moving on to the boys, Escanaba's Jared Hansen helped lead Escanaba over Sault Ste. Marie with 23 points Saturday afternoon. Republic Michigami's Derek Koski scored 20 points as the Hawks won big over Mid Peninsula on Monday night. Escanaba's Colin Hudson dropped 21 points on Thursday night to help the Eskimos down the number one Menominee Maroons. Marquette's Jordan DeMay had 21 points in a victory over Houghton on Tuesday night. Munising's Jesse Duran scored 18 points in a win over Rapid River on Tuesday night. Now, Haley, if there's one word to describe Youpers, it would be passionate. Passionate about the Upper Peninsula, passionate about the rich history and traditions that have lasted the test of time here. And Youpers are definitely passionate about their favorite sports teams. Every team has their super fan, a fan that knows every player, is always decked out from head to toe in team gear, and a fan that never misses a game. But it's not too often you come across a fan who is not a super fan of not one, but two teams. Tonight, we remember Scott Tutela. Scott Tutela loved his sports teams. A lot of his time was spent cheering on both the Ishpeming and Nagani athletic programs. Toots was always in a good mood, smiling, happy, loved life, loved being at the games. 
cheered everybody on. You know, he lived every day as everybody should, happy and giving back. Tutela could always be found in his special seat, taking in all of the action. Scott uh, would sit on that front row bench and when he was wearing his hematite hat, it was full of the buttons of the student athletes. And so um, that is what made him so special, is he would uh, just cheer on all the student athletes and whether he knew them or was a relative of them, it didn't matter. He wanted their button on his hat and he cheered them on. During last week's crosstown rivalry match between the Nagani Miners and the Ishpeming Hematites, special shirts filled the Ishpeming Gymnasium. And so um, Uber Shirts designed it as looking at Scott Tutela Toots as a cartoon character, almost like a comic book. And so if you look at the shirts, you'll see that it kind of represents that with him yelling, go hematites, go miners. Um, he was like the coach on the bench of every gym. So the shirts also state, you know, that it's Coach Toots and that's what we went with. It was a way for both programs to honor Toots, who was there for all of the wins and never left through all of the losses. The proceeds of the shirts are going to both the Nagani Booster Club and the Ishpeming Booster Club. We are dividing the funds evenly between the two schools. The family, I got in touch with them to make sure um, if they needed the money for funeral costs or anything like that, and at the time they did not, they said, give it to the school, give it back to the schools. That's what, you know, Toots would want. Coming up on the Sports Zone, we will check in with the Miners and the Redmen in the battle for the Victor's Cup. But before we do that, we'll meet this week's player spotlight that's coming up after the break. When the season tipped off, Marquette Boys basketball head coach Brad Nelson had one big question he needed answered. Where in the world was he going to get scoring production? The Redmen lost almost 90% of their scoring from last year as their talented senior class from last season graduated. Insert Jonas Bicic, a foreign exchange student from the Czech Republic. Bicic made the journey from his home country to Marquette to live out his dream of playing American basketball, and he's turned into a force for the Redmen. Jonas Bicic traveled a long way to realize his dreams of playing basketball in the United States. Uh, I come from Czech Republic, uh, from the main city actually, capital, Prague. And I mean, I don't really know what to tell you about myself. I'm just, I would say I love basketball and like, I love studying and getting new opp opportunities. That's why I came here to the United States market to like better myself. Always it has been my dream to like play in the US, like basketball came from the US, so always also NBA watching NBA players play, it's, it's just connected to US in general, so that's why. Bichik's passion for basketball came from his father. Well, my dad used to play pro basketball in Czech Republic, so they kind of, kind of got me into that. I used to play soccer actually before that, but I wasn't really a big fan of it. So I just transferred to basketball when I was eight years old, I think. And ever since then, I play basketball. Coming to the UP, Bichik's skill set was catered more towards the European game. You know, frame of a center for the UP, uh, but he's, you know, an outstanding ball handler. I think, you know, he was a guard over in Europe. So, I mean, he has that skill set, which makes him really hard to defend for teams. You know, teaching him the, the post work and the footwork down in the blocks, something that's an ongoing process because he didn't really have to over in Europe. So that's something that we're trying to get better with him just to, you know, exploit some mismatches. I mean, I had to like adjust to this team because I wasn't really the primary scorer back home. So it also like it helped me a lot to become what I am right now to just score the ball more. And I don't know, I just got kind of got used to it, I guess. The transition to a new style of play took some time, but Bitchett continues to improve as the season goes on. It's a different style. Um, you know, I think it's a little bit more up in the open court, which he's exceptional at over in Europe, where this is a little bit more controlled. Um, you know, quality possessions. You know, we want quality, not necessarily quantity. So at first, he was a little bit loose with the ball, turning it over a little bit, but we've tightened that up. Still got to do a better job as a team of taking care of the ball, but that's one thing that I see the most improvement in. It didn't take long for Coach Nelson to realize Bitchett could hold his own on the court. 
You know, I've had transfer students in the past that come out for the team and normally you want to give them the experience and I kind of heard about Yonash um, early in the season. I haven't really, I didn't see him play originally and when I saw him play I realized that he's a really exceptional player. Uh, you know, most of the time a transfer from a foreign country, you know, they say they're good and then they get here and they're not as good, but sometimes you do get a quality player and Yonash is one of them. Halfway through the season, Bichik says his experience in Marquette with his new teammates has been everything he hoped it would be. He definitely, definitely brought me in with arms open and even like there was no language barrier. We just speak normally and it has been really nice with them. Like they taught me so many things. The main thing I would say, I feel like I became more confident in as a player and as a teammate. And the team quality is really nice and the chemistry also is really good. And we're also improving as a team, so I feel like we're going to be really, really good at the end of the season. Bichik will continue to be a key piece for the Redmen who have big goals this season. As a team goal, we would like to win the district. That'd be probably my biggest goal this season. He's an outstanding kid, outstanding student, quality basketball player on top of all those things. And it's, you know, it's been a pleasure being able to coach him. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to reveal our next game of the week for the high school basketball season. You won't want to miss this. That's coming up next. Welcome back into the Sports Zone. We're going to go back to Barb Curl Gymnasium in Marquette for the game between the Redmond and Nagani boys basketball team. Uh, this game currently at halftime. Marquette winning right now 39-23. to The Redmond looking for their 11th victory in 12 games over the Miners. Now this is considered one of the biggest rivalries in all of the UP. But the Redmond definitely have had the Nagani Miners number as of late. And at halftime, the, the audience there had a very special guest. Nick Baumgartner was there uh, showing off that gold medal from the Winter Olympics that he won uh, just a, uh, last week, I think it was. Yeah, super cool. I'm really excited. There he is right there walking across the gym floor. I'm really excited to see who will take this one. Should be another great game, Jake. Definitely. For full highlights of that game tonight between the Redmen and Nagani, uh, tune into Local 3. We'll have post-game reaction from the winner, and that's going to be on Local 3 tonight at 10. I'll have all of that for you. A lot of star power in this one. Nick Nora and the Kingsford Flivers welcome in Aiden Belisle, Cooper Conway, and the rest of the Menominee Maroons next Tuesday night for our game of the week. These teams met not too long ago, taking the court in Menominee on January 24th. The Maroons entered that game 9-1. and one. Kingsford was 7-1. and one. And it was Menominee who would lead that game from opening tip to the final buzzer, defeating the Flivers 50-31. Cooper Conway led the Maroons in that one with 20 points, and it's going to be a tough task for Kingsford to slow down a Maroons team who has talent all over the court. Not only that, but Menominee will be on their A game looking to bounce back from that loss against Escanaba on Tuesday night. Kingsford is looking to extend their win streak to four games, and they seem to have found a little bit of a, a rhythm as we near the postseason. We'll have highlights and postgame reaction from that game next Thursday night here on the Sports Zone. In the meantime, you can keep up with us on our social media pages. It's at the Local 3 Sports ZN on Twitter and Local 3 Sports Zone on Facebook. We post all of our stories on those social media sites after the shows. Also, that's where you'll find our hoop highlights throughout the week. That's all the time we have for you all tonight. I hope everyone has a great rest of the week and an excellent weekend. We will see you all here next Thursday night.